Hey guys, it's Leah B from Prestige Veteran Medical Consulting. I'm a US Army veteran, physician assistant, and former compensation and pension examiner. Today, I want to come on and do a video about gout and how that can be related to PTSD and VA disability. So we've done videos on gout in the past. Today's focus is going to be, like I said, on PTSD and also alcohol use um, that can be related to mental health conditions. And so I hope you guys find this helpful. Um, so let's first start off by talking about what gout is. So what is gout? So the Mayo Clinic defines gout as a common and complex form of arthritis that can affect anybody. It's characterized by sudden severe attacks of pain, swelling, redness, and tenderness in one or more joints, often the big toe. An attack of gout can occur suddenly, often waking you up in the middle of the night with the sensation uh, um, of just tons of pain in that big toe. The affected joint is hot, swollen, and so tender that even the weight of the bed of a bed sheet on it can be excruciatingly painful and intolerable. So some of the symptoms can be intense joint pain, like we talked about. Um, it can occur in any joint, not just the big toe. Um, other commonly affected joints include the ankles, knees, elbows, wrists, and fingers. The pain is likely to be most severe within the first 12 hours after it begins. You can have lingering discomfort, inflammation, and redness, limited range of motion. So some of the causes of gout. So urate crystals will um, form when you have high levels of uric acid so how do how do those high levels of uric acid develop in the body so either you're under excreting them or you're over accumulating them so if you've got like kidney disease or something that's impairing you from being able to um, excrete some of those toxins in your urine that can be an issue so if you've got chronic kidney disease or something like that um, that can be a, a cause or if you're um, if you take in too much, right? And your body's just not able to process it out as quickly as you're taking it in. So a lot of times it can be related to things that you eat, like red meat, alcohol use. Um, let's see what Mayo Clinic says. So certain foods, again, like red meat, um, organ meats, like liver, rich, uh, purine rich seafood, including anchovies, sardines, alcoholic beverages, especially beer, a lot of sugary drinks, promote higher levels of uric acid. So now we're in, ingesting too much, right? Um, normally uric acid dissolves in your blood, passes through your kidneys into your urine, but sometimes either your body produces too much or the kidneys excrete too little. So too much buildup of that uric acid in the body can create um, problems, right? When this happens, uric acid can build up, forming sharp needle-like urate urate crystals in the joint so all that uric acid makes crystals and it gets deposed or there's deposition like in your big toe and in these joints and it's extremely painful i remember when i was on active duty i had lots of service members it's, it was quite common actually on active duty to have um people that had this happen and they would take different medications to um sort of get the pain under control in the moment and sometimes people would take chronic medications to keep their uric acid levels down Okay, so risk factors. So you're more likely to develop it if you have high levels of uric acid in your body. Factors that increase uric acid as diet, like we just talked about weight, if you're overweight, certain medications um, and medical conditions. So medical conditions, um, untreated high blood pressure, chronic conditions like diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome, heart disease, kidney disease. Uh, medications like diuretics. I think I've done a video on diuretics and gout in the past and hypertension. If not, I'll, I'll get another one going for you guys because I think that's a really good one too for gout. Um, family history of gout, um, age and sex. So gout occurs more often in men. Um, recent surgery or trauma. Okay, so that's about what, what gout is. So how can that be related to service? So on a primary or secondary basis, like we talked about, if you got diagnosed with gout and it became a chronic condition um, while on active duty, that might be some, somewhat simple if you're still suffering from it. If you have a secondary medical, if you have a different medical condition that's causing or worsening the gout um, or aggravating beyond its natural progression, that can also be a way to connect it. So let's talk about PTSD and alcohol use disorder. So we always talk about weight gain as an intermediate step with different things. So just PTSD in general, if you're overweight or you're obese and that obesity is directly related to your mental health condition, let's say it's because you have a social phobia, let's say it's because you um, like you don't want to go to the gym, you're depressed, you just stay on the couch, you have no motivation, you comfort eat. Those are these are the things I hear echoed quite often from veterans. Or let's say you um, again, you have difficulty getting out there and exercising and then you have these compensatory eating mechanisms. So 
Um, and then alcohol use disorder or alcohol use to cope with some of those things, right? So um, let me pull up some of the literature for you guys that I like to use. Um, hang on one second. Okay, so here's an article. In April 2022, a journal article called The Relationship Between Alcohol Consumption and Gout, um, a Mendelian random, randomization study. Uh, the authors opened their discussion reporting that excessive alcohol consumption is assumed to be one of the main contributors to the development of the disease. A journal article, um, The Role of Alcohol Consumption and Pathogenesis of Gout. Um, acknowledges that alcohol is a recognized as a risk factor for increased uric acid gout flares. Uh, April 2014 ar journal article, alcohol quantity and type of risk recurrent gout attacks in internet based case crossover study. Um, also took a look at this. And so some of those other studies we've mentioned in other video or other videos before about weight gain as an intermediate step. Um, let me pull up one of those for y'all. Body mass index, obesity, and prevalent gout in the United States in 1988 through 1994 and 2007 through 2010, published in Arthritis Care Research, discusses the relationship between obesity and gout specifically. Post-traumatic stress disorder predicts future weight gain in Millennium Cohort Study. I was actually in the Millennium Cohort Study, as were probably many of you guys that served over the past few decades. And they look at um, PTSD and its effect on the central nervous system and appetite regulation. Uh, do, does depression cause obesity? A meta-analysis of longitudinal studies of depression and weight control published in 2008 in the Journal of Psychology is another good one. So again, your weight gain can't just be because you just got, you, you know, you have lifestyle choices that, um, you know, maybe you like to go to McDonald's all the time and you have a busy job, etc. You really have to show how the obesity occurred because of your mental health condition. Um, and how that really played a huge role or caused you to become obese, okay? Or any other medical condition that you're trying to draw that relationship, that parallel to. So I hope this was helpful. Again, remember, I'm not an accredited claims agent or BSO or an attorney. I'm a medical professional. I assist with these types of reports that you can also obtain from your doctor um, or the VA if they choose to write one for you. So if you need legal representation, check out va.gov. There's a good search tool for you guys to find BSOs or accredited legal professionals that, that may be able to help you with the filing process. Please drop some comments. If you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I always answer these um, myself. And thank you for watching.